I want to thank you all for coming today to this special event. I'm Nancy Adams, co-president, along with Larry Kelsey of the South Bristol Historical Society. We are all here today to take part in the 150th anniversary celebration of the schooner Louis R. French. We are so pleased that the French has, this weekend, returned to Christmas Cove on the South Bristol Peninsula, where her long life began in 1871. Our speaker today is David Andrews, an historian and founding member of the South Bristol Historical Society in 1998. David has been researching local shipbuilding for over 20 years. Our special guest is Captain Garth Wells, of Schooner Lewis R. French. He will answer questions from the audience about his time owning and sailing the oldest commercial vessel in America. We commend Captain Wells' careful stewardship of this National Historic Landmark. It is a most worthy endeavor as a thank you for being here today, the Historical Society would like to present you the gift of three local history books, all relevant in some way to the times of the original French family. I hope you'll enjoy them. sale outside on the porch. You'll also find them on our website and at the Society's Museum and Genealogy Center just south of the bridge in the village. The building is home to our collection of artifacts and historical memorabilia. Both the museum and the S Road School are open this summer on Saturdays from 1 to 4. On the other side of the porch today, you'll find the South Bristol 8th graders who are offering raffle tickets for a 7-foot Yankee tender that they built in the Discovery Boat Building Program at Maine Maritime Museum. 2021 was the 25th year of this unique program. The proceeds of the raffle will go towards sending the South Bristol 8th grade class to Washington, D.C. next spring. A quick mention of another event coming up next Saturday, July 3rd. The Thompson Ice House will start their summer season with the annual ice cream social from noon to 3. Now we will hear from David Andrews. I'm going to talk briefly about the Lewis Howard French and the building of it. Um, mostly the building. Uh, Try to get through this quickly so you can really take your shots at Captain Well. Any of you that have been around wooden boats, particularly old, old wooden boats, probably will agree with this quote by Jake here. I certainly believe it. I think wooden boats have some sort of spirit of soul that, uh, that you just don't find anywhere else. So the question, and it is instilled by the people that build the boat. Um, just a couple words about the French family. This is Lewis himself, courtesy of your website, sir. Um, the the um, the French family lived right here. You drove by their house coming here. I see the current owner sitting right here in front. Uh, they were uh, uh, avid members of the community, uh, and um, the boat was here for quite some time, which is a bit unusual. Um, the question of who built the Louis R. French, who was the builder of record, and I'm careful to say of record, 
It would be easy to answer. If we had uh, the carpenter certificate, which was submitted as part of the enrollment of the pension in 1871, that's, that's hard to read. Uh, I blew it up a little bit. Um, that would, uh, they had to have that because um, they had to certify to the customs officer that it was an American built boat, along with the survey, which, which was the official certified uh, um, uh, capacity of the boat, the 35 tons. But that document didn't survive. Uh, I made several calls, and nobody, uh, none of the libraries I spoke to thinks that any of these certificates survive. However, we have the next best thing. In 1900, a man by the name of Lowell Seidemann from Dammer Scott, who was the deputy uh, customs officer for the Noble, Noble Borough uh, Southern Custom House at Rockland was the lead place, published a book that listed all of the boats built in Damascot, Newcastle, Ringling, Nobleboro, and Bristol. And remember that in 1900, South Bristol would have been part of Bristol. And they list, and here is the important Louis R. French question. Uh, he shows that the Louis R. French was built by the A&M Gammon ship, ship A&M Gammon and Company. Boat building folks. Um, this, that, that piece of information uh, was also um, also in uh, Nelson Gamage's book called Short History of South Bristol. He listed all the boats built in South Bristol. He's the brother of AM, Albion and Menzies Gamage. And I think he probably would know what boats his brother built. Also, Harvey Gamage told um, the author, um, I forgot the author's name all of a sudden. Anyway, passed on the information that uh, the Lewis uh, French was built by Hayden and Gamage. So, Albion and Menzies, um, who lived in South Bristol Village, were the sons of Skipper Tom Gamage and Wadey Thompson. They and their four brothers and three sisters grew up in a town, in a village that was dedicated to seafaring, fishing, and lost, and boat building. They're steeped in the, in the traditions. Their father built a boat. boat uh, he was a banks fisherman, and he built a boat. Um, two of his brothers built schooners that, that were fishing schooners. And uh, in, uh, around 1850, they started the Adam Gambage and Company Boat Their primary building location was at um, what is currently um, uh, the Gambage Shipyard on uh, the Marine. Um, in all, between 1854 and about 1902, they built 88, at least 88, known vessels, um, they served, and they repaired many too. They were very successful. Um, the, up until about 1860, they kind of specialized in uh, schooners that were fishing schooners going off quickly to the banks, but also uh, mackerel schooners and that sort of thing. This is not a Gamage boat. We have no pictures of their vessels, but this is one that I snitched offline that looks pretty similar. And they also built a number of sloops. This is not the Gamage Yard. This is um, a little bit more yard, and that's a large uh, friendship of Muskegon, Muskegon's Bay sloop um, of the type that Gamage, the Gamages would be built. In 1870. Um, Things really changed, both for South Bristol and for the Gamma Chart. Um, in 1850, 1870, excuse me, 1870, things really changed. Uh, from 1870 to about 1880, South Bristol was at the bullseye of the pokey oil manufacturing business. Um, uh, Booth Bay 
South Bristol and um, um, Bristol. It just, it was a boom. Everybody made lots of money. Um, and the Gamages uh, uh, made a good money. They built um, sloops, carry away sloops, which were the initial boat used for fishing for the ponies, and then large steamers. This is just a drawing um, that clearly shows the sloops and steamers. Here's uh, a picture of Pemmican Harbor, and at least two of those steamers, 80 foot steamboats, uh, were built by Gamage. Um, I can tell because that's the whole fleet, <laughs> uh, several from several places. And you can see a carrier wayboat on the left, oh, excuse me, on the right, and somebody's two-masted schooner on the left. Similar. <laughs> yeah, it is similar. They're all similar. They also started building um, coastal vessels for, for the trailer trucks of, of, of the seas. And it's possible, it's, it's not clear, it's possible that Louis R. French was the first coastal trader that they built. The, um, they built several boats of about the same size uh, that are unidentified, but I'll go with the Louis R. French. And uh, they started to build um, these, uh, uh, what are called schooner smacks. These are boats that have a wet well for carrying. Well, they carry fresh fish, but here in Maine, they were, they were the boats that went around and, and carried live lobsters to Boston. Very important boats, very uh, handy, fast um, boats. I think this, uh, the Beale shows the lines, and they became very well known for the building of these boats. Um, their vessels were, were bought by everyone from Gloucester all the way up uh, to Calais and New Beck. Um, by the 1890s, the uh, boat building for working sail boats had pretty well died out. And um, really the last three boats they built were the three steamers, the Newcastle, in, in order when they were built, the Anodyne, the Bristol, and the Newcastle. And these were built for the Damage Scott Steamboat Company, which was owned by Elliot P. Gamage, the son of Menzies Gamage. Um, and I have the privilege of owning Elliot P. Gamage's house right across from there. I always have to say that. Um, and with the Newcastle, that was the end of their boat building. And shortly after, um, uh, the boat yard system ceased operating. And in fact, it was used as a, as a workstation for the, uh, the steamboat lines. Now, you can't, two guys can't build boats. It, it, the year that the, the Louis South French was built, they launched four schooners of about the same size as the French and four uh, sloops in the 25 foot range. That's a lot of boats. You need a crew. You need a crew of men that were skilled in the various boat building trades in order to, to do this. And you can kind of, you can identify some of those people, particularly in 1870 when the French was built. If you go to the 18th century, 1870 U.S. Census, where they list occupations, and this is just a picture of one of the pages. It's the, it's the census for Bristol, but once you know what you're looking at, you can identify villages because here's a whole list of names that you know belong to South Bristol, as is this case here. And there is, it happens to be Albion Gamage, there's an uh, entry in the thing, and if you look carefully, I think you can see it, it says Ship's Carpenter. Well, uh, these are the names that I pulled out of um, that were either ship's carpenters, joiners, caulkers, or sailmakers in South Bristol. These men are all living in South Bristol Village and on Rutherford's Island. Um, there were other men that certainly worked on the boats, helped out. 
because some of these folks actually are other boat builders. So they may not have actually worked at the damage yard, but I'm sure that some of these people built the Lewis Dock French. John Barr. Yeah. Uh, amongst others. Yeah. Um, so, um, and uh, many of them, I'm sure many of the, the fishermen, you know, they knew boats, they knew how to build and repair boats. They probably filled in or helped out or worked part time. And they would draw upon um, some of the, uh, like riggers and other the, the specialists would come over. They'd just go across East Booth Bay, which is just across the street in 1870, and get riggers or sailmakers. And, and uh, I, I actually I didn't list it here, but there was a black, there was a Gamage blacksmith right in the village too. So he probably made all the iron. And this is. Uh, Really, my last uh, point. This is 1872, the year after the French was built. Um, this is the Alwaldo Morse, which is a slightly smaller vessel. It's a wet well, wet smack schooner. Um, if you look carefully, um, you can see the holes, the openings in the side of the boat. And there are 12, actually 12 people on the boat working, we assume they're working. So, and that gives you an idea, at least an idea. This is actually in South Bristol Village, right in the Gamma shipyard. If you, the buildings in the back, um, that this, the white building on the left is still there, and the stone wharf that this, the building on the left here is still there. Well, that's my little story of um, and a so now we can turn over to um, Captain Wells for Q&A.